Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to iTouch App Reviewers. In this video, we're gonna be talking about iOS 13.3.1 and everything new inside of this update for your iPhone. So first, let's talk about the size of this update. This update came in at around 278 megabytes on this iPhone 11 Pro, and I was coming from the public build of iOS 13.3, so no beta builds for me on this one. Uh, so it was just straight up 278 megabytes not too big. Now, as you guys can see here, the build number is 17D50. So obviously, since this is a public release, there is no letter at the end. On top of this, the modem firmware was also updated. If you are having any connectivity issues with LTE, definitely get this update going. This update should resolve most of those issues. Now let's talk about some of the main features of iOS 13.3.1. The first main feature here is the ability to turn off the U1 chip. So if you go into settings and you scroll down to privacy, location services, and then scroll all the way down until you see system services right there, you will see a new one in here called networking and wireless. What a lot of people are forgetting is that there used to be an option in here named Wi-Fi networking. That is now gone and they've combined everything into this. So if you previously watched my other videos going over which ones of these to turn off, I told you to turn off Wi-Fi networking because what it does is it crowdsources information about your location and what Wi-Fi network you're on and sends it to the cloud. Apple knows where you're at and anyone else that joins that Wi-Fi network, it knows where they're at too. So it's kind of creepy. I know they anonymize most of it, but still that should be off. When I came in here, obviously this one's off as well. So if I turn it on just for the sake of the video and I try to turn it back off, you guys can see right here, it says turning off location for networking and wireless may affect Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and ultra wideband performance. I don't care. I'm keeping it off until I need those things. Now I will probably have to do an updated video uh, going over these settings because a lot of other reviewers are not diving into this and the security implications. I also don't think this totally disables the U1 chip. I think that this just disables them tracking your location. So I would turn that off for now. Now for those of you that set communication limits based on contacts, like maybe on your kid's phone or something, there was a bypass where if you set it to contacts only, your kids could just add someone as a contact and then they would instantly be able to text whoever they wanted uh, just by doing that. Now this has been fixed in this update. If you try to add a contact uh, from an unknown, it will ask you to enter the password for the screen time uh, lock that you set. So they cannot do that anymore. Thank goodness they finally fixed that. Such a small thing, but they did finally fix it. Now, another thing that they updated was in the Apple TV app. If you are watching a series or a TV show and you go back to that same TV show after you've already watched it, instead of saying play episode, it'll say play again. So you will know that you've already watched that. So that is a nice little touch that they added. I can't show you it here because I don't watch anything in this, but you can take my word for it. Now, if you've been having issues with your speakerphone echoing, which a lot of people were having issues on the betas, um, this is now completely resolved on iOS 13.3.1. So you should have absolutely no issues in the phone app if you are on speakerphone. So no more echoes. Now I'm going to pull up the release notes here. So we've already talked about the first two. Now this third one here that says addresses an issue that could cause a momentary delay before editing a deep fusion photo taken on iPhone 11 or 11 Pro. That obviously also includes the 11 Pro Max. So if you took a photo that used deep fusion, when you tried to edit it, there could be a little delay when you click the edit button, they fix that. They've also resolved an issue with mail that could cause remote images to load even when you disabled that option. I always keep that disabled because that is how email companies track you. Uh, they put a little pixel in the corner that you can't see. And when that loads, it sends a ping back to their server saying that you open their email. I keep that off. If you want to turn it off, I'll show you guys how to do it. Settings, scroll down to mail and right here, turn off load remote images and you'll be set. Now it, emails might look a little ugly, but you can always load them on a per email basis. So I highly recommend that back to the notes fixes an issue that could cause multiple undo dialogues to appear in mail. I did not experience that, but if you did, let me know down below. Addresses an issue in which FaceTime could use the rear facing ultra wide camera instead of the wide camera. I know of quite a few people that reported that. So thank you guys for reporting these. Resolves an issue in which push notifications could fail to be delivered over Wi-Fi. If you only do this update for one reason, I would do it just for this reason. This is a big one. So if you, if you are missing notifications for whatever reason, uh, this should fix that. It's a CarPlay issue that could cause distorted sound when making phone calls in certain vehicles and introduces support for Indian English Siri voices for HomePod. Now, real quickly, I'm going to go over the other Apple updates that came out today. HomePod had a uh, release as well. It's support for the Indian English voices and also stability and quality improvements. If you have an Apple Watch, there's also an update there, uh, 6.1.2 and they didn't really give any information. This update provides important security. Nothing really there. Mac OS 10.15.3, uh, 
uh, optimizes gamma handling of low gray levels on Pro XDR display, and improves multi-stream video editing performance on the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Now let's talk about one of the most important features of an update, and that is performance. So far, I have had no issues with any apps, no crashes, no stuttering. Everything actually feels a little bit quicker, especially animations. No one else has talked about this, but I've noticed some animations just feel quicker, uh, like jumping in and out of folders. It just feels quicker. Battery life so far has been great, no issues there. Of course, I will do an update video if anything does happen, so be sure to subscribe. And overall, do I recommend this update? I absolutely do. This release includes a lot of performance improvements and bug fixes, so I recommend everyone check it out. Also, there were a bunch of uh, security updates that they did in this. Now, I know a lot of YouTubers don't go over this because it's not flashy, but these are all the different bugs that they were able to fix in this, and a lot of these are actually pretty important, like kernel bugs. These exploits could be used for uh, various bad things, like an application may be able to read restricted memory, stuff like that. So you definitely want to update to get these bug fixes. That's been my review of iOS 13.3.1. Definitely let me know your thoughts on this. Drop a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe because I'm going to be putting out polls asking you guys if you notice any bugs in this software. But that's all I got for this one, guys. If you liked it, hit with a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.